Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus, home of Guam's first and only lifetime powertrain warranty. Visit carsplusguam.com for details. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on primetime, a pair of Guam Memorial Hospital doctors test positive for COVID after returning from a country considered a hotspot. Plus, a 10% increase in water rates was approved by the Consolidated Commission on Utilities and a two-day training for the National Guard's Advanced Leaders Course wrapped up today. Half and good evening, I'm Adriana Cotero. Some alarming news out of the Guam Memorial Hospital as two fully vaccinated GMH doctors tested positive for coronavirus after returning back on island from a COVID-19 hotspot last week. Guam Memorial Hospital Administrator Lillian Posadas received the report on Monday that a couple of GMH doctors returned from India and over the weekend were experiencing COVID symptoms. Posadas tells KUAM the doctors arrived on island on April 17th right before India surge as the Middle Eastern country's COVID crisis continues to deepen. The doctors, however, were given quarantine exemptions as Posada says they had negative PCR tests upon arrival that were accepted. She confirms that the doctors were cleared and responding to a handful of patients, including a COVID patient seen by one of the doctors. Public health officials have said that someone exposed to the virus can test negative if tested too soon after exposure. Both doctors, after experiencing COVID symptoms, underwent an Abbott ID test and were positive for COVID-19. They are currently in isolation. But we want to also make sure that uh, the PCR, because that's the basically the confirmatory tests, if those if the PCR tests come back, uh, you know, negative, then uh, that gives us that assurance that, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're free of the infection. While GMH awaits confirmatory PCR test results, Posada says the hospital is re-examining their protocols as this does draw major concerns for our lone public hospital designated for COVID response. Sure, absolutely, there's concern, but you know, everybody again continues to wear uh, the protective uh, gear. And so, you know, uh, the, with contact tracing, our uh, infection control and employee health are following, following through with the contact tracing. KUAM reached out to Public Health PIO Janela Carrera for an update on their contact tracing efforts and any potential exposures. As of news time, we have not received a response. And we should note the COVID-19 hospitalization census has increased to five patients. There are no COVID patients in the intensive care unit or on ventilator support. Defense counsel William Poole asked the court for a little more time before murder defendant Matthew Manabusen answers to charges. Manabusen appeared for his arraignment hearing this afternoon. However, attorney Pohl asked for a continuance. Pohl stated that he just received his client's file this morning and based on the seriousness of the charges, he would like more time to meet with Manabusen. Manabusen was indicted for two counts of murder as a first degree felony, one count of aggravated assault as a second degree felony, possession of a firearm without a firearms ID as a third degree felony, all charges with a special allegation for the possession or use of a deadly weapon in the commission of a felony. He is accused for the April 15th fatal shooting of Joshua Menno. Menno's lifeless body was found along Swamp Road in Dededo. His arraignment was continued to May 3rd. The woman facing murder charges for the beating and death of former Umatic Mayor Daniel Sanchez will have to wait longer for her arraignment hearing as this afternoon Joyner Sked was appointed a new attorney to represent her. Sked along with co-defendant repeated violent offender Rudy Kenyatta are accused for the homicide of Sanchez. Sanchez's expired body was found earlier this month in Kenyatta's home after police were called upon for a welfare check. Defense counsel Randy Cunliffe filed a motion for withdrawal due to conflict. As stated in court, Cunliffe has represented Kenyatta for over 40 years and Kenyatta plans to hire him again regarding this case. The court granted the motion and appointed attorney Gloria Rudolph. Sked's arraignment hearing was moved to May 6th. From a life in prison sentence to 14 years, a top ring leader of a massive drug enterprise that occurred nearly a decade ago appeared for a resentencing hearing in district court this morning. In 2017, a jury found Francisco Arias guilty for multiple counts of drug conspiracy distribution and money laundering related charges. He was sentenced to life in prison, however, he successfully appealed the convictions and was acquitted of money laundering and the higher court also vacated the conspiracy to distribute meth charge.
This ultimately led to a retrial with the case returning back from the Ninth Circuit. Although there will not be another trial as Arias has since entered a plea agreement and back in January, he pled guilty to count one conspiracy to distribute meth. He is accused for leading the drug scheme to smuggle in large amounts of meth packages from 2010 to 2014. During his sentencing hearing this morning, Chief Judge Francis Hedinko Gatewood said this was a very serious and important case for Guam as there were a total of 14 co-conspirators involved. Arias has served nearly seven years thus far and has notably stayed out of trouble during this time and done well while incarcerated. Both parties and the Office of Probation agreed to sentencing recommendation of 168 months or 14 years with credit for time served, which is more than the minimum imprisonment. Arias apologized to the court, the government, and the people of Guam. He stated, quote, what hurts the most for me is being separated from my children, my wife, and my family. I feel I have paid deeply for this and apologize for what I have done, unquote. It was stated in court that once he completes his sentencing term, he will be deported back to Mexico. The court made a judicial recommendation on behalf of the defense that Arias be evaluated for drug court that is returned to the mainland Federal Bureau of Prison be expedited. He served his time at Terminal Island in California and for continued education or vocational training. Following his imprisonment, Arias will serve a supervised release term of five years. A 10% increase in water rates was approved by the Consolidated Commission on Utilities in a meeting Tuesday night. The hike is part of an ongoing five-year plan to gradually raise rates to pay for major capital improvements to the water and sewer system. The improvements are mandated under a long-standing federal consent decree to bring GWA system in compliance with the Clean Water Act. CCU member Simon Sanchez explains. This is sort of a continuation of what we've been doing for the last 20 years of rebuilding the entire system with five-year rate adjustments. Keep it as affordable as, as we can and spread it out. And this next set of rate hikes that we're looking at would produce the seeds for $340 million of improvements. GWA plans to raise rates by another 10% next year and by 7% in the following year. The increase must still be approved by the Public Utilities Commission. $2.6 billion in federal funding will soon be available for restaurants, food trucks, and a variety of other food and beverage establishments. The U.S. Small Business Administration announced that registration for the Re Restaurant Revitalization Fund will begin on Friday, April 30th at 11 p.m. Chamorro Standard Time. The Guam Hotel and Restaurant Association President Mary Rhodes says Guam is considered an underserved population, which will give local companies an edge. The GHRA has been helping applicants get their information and documentation ready for when the program goes live. It's only going to be offered during a very limited time for 21 days. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they've done this kind of beta testing with a sample application so everybody can prep for it. So once it opens, it's first come, first serve, but the priorities will be given to those companies who meet the eligibility criteria and those special set-asides for women-owned, veteran-owned, and all of the other categories. The SBA will conduct a webinar on Tuesday, May 4th at 10.30 a.m. to help walk through the restaurant revitalization program enrollment process. Go to restaurants.sba.gov for more information. State memorial services were held today for a 10-term senator and former speaker Joe Titaitano San Augustine. He was honored for his many years of public service, his financial expertise, and his strong advocacy for the Government of Guam Retirement Fund. Delivering the eulogy was his nephew and longtime staffer, Tyrone Titano. He shared a time during the 21st Guam legislature when Senator-elect Mary Lynn Wanpat passed away prior to inauguration. The Democrats and Republicans were deadlocked at 10 members each, but they eventually chose San Augustine to lead them. I don't mean to gloss over the elements of politics or personalities involved in moments like this. However, not every legislator could have pulled off a result like that. It was a testament to who Joe T. was as a person, his qualities as a leader, and the respect and trust people have for him throughout his public service career. That if the Republicans secured a majority, he would resign as Speaker and give the new majority the opportunity to put forth its own candidate for the post. That was the kind of leader Joe T. St. Augustine was. 
The former speaker was predeceased by his wife Carmen and they are survived by five children. Joe passed away on April 15th at the age of 90. CLTC Administrator Jack Haddock has tendered his resignation. But that doesn't mean he's stepping away from the government of Guam. Adaloop Communications Director Crystal Paco San Augustine says his last official day at CLTC is May 7th. He'll be moving to Adaloop as a staff assistant at the office of the governor. Paco San Augustine adds there was no reason provided in the letter as to why he resigned. However, during an April 15th CLTC board meeting, Chairman Juan Regis Jr. told Haddock that the board deemed him not suited for the job. As reported, Haddock had been accused by at least one CLTC land agent of coercion and altering a land report. The CLTC board conducted an investigation but did not release the findings, citing that it was a personnel matter. And stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. The thing about freedom is, freedom has no limits. There's no such thing as too many adventures or too many unforgettable moments. There will never be too many stories to write or too many memories to make. But when it comes to a vehicle that will be there for it all, there's only one, Jeep. While we've all been through a lot over the years, typhoons, earthquakes, and now COVID-19, we've been able to get through these together. For more than 80 years, Alba's Insurance has been protecting your homes, your businesses, and the health of your family. We are here today, and we'll be here tomorrow. There are better days ahead. Tomorrow's a new day filled with hope and choices. The possibilities of what we can achieve together are limitless. Let's continue to work together to ensure a brighter tomorrow for all of us. With Prism Home Wi-Fi, I'm not just getting smart Wi-Fi that adapts and delivers consistent speeds that cater to my lifestyle needs. Whoa. I'm getting peace of mind with real-time online security that monitors every device on my network. Parental controls with the ability to filter age-appropriate content for my child. And with HomePass, I have full control over my network and so much more. Experience Wi-Fi and beyond with Prism Home Wi-Fi, powered by Plume Home Pass from GTA. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Welcome back. On Tuesday and Wednesday, students of the National Guard's Advanced Leaders course conducted training exercises near the Port Authority. It was the first time soldiers were able to stay on island for the training in over 10 years. Tyler Matanani has the story. <laughs> 24 soldiers from the Guam National Guard were challenged with putting their knowledge to the test. For two days, soldiers conducted training exercises near the Port Authority of Guam for the Advanced Leaders Course, or ALC class. It's the first time Guam has been able to offer Guard members the course on island in over a decade. Guam National Guard Public Affairs Officer, Captain Mark Scott. It enables soldiers in the Guam National Guard to get promoted from their E5 to their E6, or Sergeant to Staff Sergeant. Training effects included the use of blank ammunition and flashbang simulators. Soldiers are usually required to go off island to receive the training, but thanks to the recent accreditation of the Guam Guard's 203rd Regional Training Institute, soldiers were able to train at home base. Sergeant Thomas Guess is from the Mississippi National Guard and is the infantry SME for the RTIs across the nation. Sergeant Bailey is from the 154th RTI to Mississippi. Uh, Colonel Honeycutt's our commander. Uh, so the purpose for coming here to Guam is to conduct 11 Bravo ALC and to see if Guam could possibly support running their own 11 Bravo ALCs in the future maybe. The training was a culmination of ALC exercises and soldiers were tasked with putting three and a half weeks worth of training to the test. We've had a lot of classroom environment. We've done some range stuff. So here's where we use our blanks and you know other non-lethal rounds. As rainfall and sunshine steamed and thickened the air and jungle tangled their paths, Guam's landscape offered realism of the environmental stresses of combat. 
they're definitely being challenged out here on the sticks lanes, but it's nothing out of the ordinary for, for soldiers at their level. 30-year-old Sergeant Ray Victor Sinicolis from Alpha Company 1st 294th Infantry Regiment is one of the LC students. He explained that going into the training, he expected to gain knowledge and experience on the island's terrain. I was expecting to learn and grow, which is what has happened progressively since we've been going through the phases. The soldiers recently graduated from ALC Phase 1 and are now in phase the last portion of their training and are expected to graduate in a couple of days. The Nicholas said the training has been physically and mentally challenging, but the team has found strength in each other. We're all from Guam. We're all from the same battalion and we all know each other. We cover each other's left and right, front and back, and we just we're just there for each other. We're the driving force for us to keep pushing forward, motivation. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matanani. Since 6 a.m., residents lined up at the Manilao and Barragada food commodity distribution sites. KUAM's Isaiah Uggen has this report. We went to the food commodities distributions held in the central villages, which both had over 100 cars lining up three hours before it began. At the old carnival grounds in Tizan, the Barragada mayor's office gave out 750 packages of frozen and dry goods from the TFAB food program and the USDA. Mayor June Blas says that it proceeded well and she has seen an increase of her village's residents taking advantage of the free food opportunity. Yes, so the last time we had was 500 and even that, that was not enough. So we had to ask for an additional 250 at least to, to do a cushion to help our residents. So, you know, we, we do try to, to give us what, what we can you know, to our residents that are really are still in need. Meanwhile, over in Manila, residents made their way to the night market area where food was being distributed. Mayor Alan Nangata says the flow was smooth because of the assistance provided by AmeriCorps members and his office staff. He explained that the demand for the food is high. The program, you can see it's a, it's a great need. And uh, uh, with the line that's been since this morning, we uh, appreciate them taking advantage. And like I said, it shows that there's still a need for the food to, for our constituents and our community. He added that when the program first started last year, they only distributed 400 items worth of commodities. Now that has grown to 600. Angata plans to request for 200 more food commodities after he sees the results of next week's distribution. The Manilao Mayor's Office will hold another free food distribution at the same location next week Wednesday, May 5th, beginning at 8.30 a.m. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahusi, Isaiah Uggen. On Saturday, the Island Beautification Task Force held an island-wide cleanup in collaboration with the Guam Visitors Bureau, and it was successful. According to a press release, the event as part of Earth Month had overwhelming support and more than 1,000 island residents volunteering their time. The Guam Solid Waste Authority recorded 17.36 tons or 34,720 pounds of trash collected, including tires, loose metals, white goods and other bulky waste. IBTF and GVB thank the Agate Mayor's Office and iRecycle Program Administrator Peggy Denny for sorting and recycling collections and Mr. Rubbishman who provided the roll-off bins. And we continue our five-part series, Sustainability Matters. All week long, we'll be featuring businesses, groups, and families doing their part to live sustainability, encourage sustainable practices, and make Guam a better place to live. Joan Uggen Charferes stopped by Back to Nature in Tamuning. Sustainability Matters, in partnership with the University of Guam Center for Island Sustainability and Guam Green Growth, presented by Green Energy Solutions, Inc. pandemic hit and we were forced into lockdown, many turned to gardening as a natural therapy for coping with the isolation we were experiencing, and others embraced it as a return to sustainable living. Back to Nature Gardening and Hydroponics opened its doors in November last year. Co-owner India Sakaguchi. Like everybody else, when the pandemic hit, you know, we had to kind of reevaluate um, our lives in general. Um, we did have a business um, that was quite uh, tourist dependent, so we had to scale that way back. We basically turned our hobby of gardening into a business um, by bringing in a lot of the products that we saw were doing really well um, in other stores around Guam. We haven't stopped yet. We're, we're still taking customer requests all the time, trying to bring in you know whatever people are looking for, but um, we're just really happy to be Guam's first dedicated garden center. You know, you won't find any other um, 
hardware store items here. It's just, it's pure green. No matter what you're growing, and whether it's indoors or outdoors, Sakaguchi says they offer soil, fertilizer, nutrients, pest control, pots, and measuring meters to ensure you get a successful crop. She adds that if there was a positive from this pandemic, it's been people turning to their gardens and realizing the importance of sustainability. You know, before the pandemic hit, we were all embroiled in our, our nine to fives. We didn't have that much time to focus on our houses, on our gardens. Um, and as soon as we were in quarantine, we suddenly realized, you know, oh, hey, this space that's just been, you know, sitting around uh, vacant with nothing in it would look really great with like a planter and some, you know, vegetables. And why don't I turn this other space in, into like a, you know, aesthetic um, orchid wall or, you um, so many people did turn to, to, to gardening. Even though they go back to the, the normal way of life, I don't think they're going to forget um, what they've learned these past 12 months. And I, I think that's it's a good way forward. Um, a lot of the customers who come to us are younger. Um, and they'll say, um, my grandma taught me how to you know, plant this. And my granddad taught me how to raise chickens. And uh, it's, it's just, it's really, it's good for Guam. Back to Nature's NFT hydroponic systems have drawn a great deal of interest from those who live in smaller houses and apartments with no space for traditional soil-based farming. With the hydroponic systems, which are great for leafy greens, they can be growing all of the lettuce, kale, bok choy, spinach, um, all of those um, you know, leafy greens that go through a relatively quick vegetative stage. They don't have very developed root systems. Um, and that's why they, they grow very well in, in the hydroponic systems. And then you can just harvest your salads off your balcony. Um, how, how awesome is that? And she has this message for the people of Guam. Some people think that, oh, Guam's soil isn't good, so you can't grow anything. And that's just not true. You can grow so many different things. The soil is completely different from north to south anyway. Um, use what you have, grow what can be grown, and if you need to um, you use a different type of soil. The soils are read readily available. Our climate here allows us to grow so many fruits and vegetables year round. Um, we're so lucky and blessed that we have the environment and the climate that we do. You can stop by Back to Nature Gardening and Hydroponics located in Timuning behind AK. For more information, you can also follow and like their page on Instagram and Facebook. Just look for Back to Nature Guam. Sustainability Matters, in partnership with the University of Guam Center for Island Sustainability and Guam Green Growth, presented by Green Energy Solutions, Inc. Sports is next. Keep it here. Community Calendars, brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. Welcome to your wildest cravings come true. Where the abundance of a Chalupa Cravings box is all yours. Savor this moment of pure Taco Bell bliss, because it won't last forever. It's value beyond belief. Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. Last night, the Harvest Eagles and Father Duaneus Friars met up at the jungle in Mingilao for this year's AAG Boys High School Volleyball Championship title. Let's get to the highlights. It only took three sets for the Father Duenas Friars to be crowned 2021 Double I Double AG Boys High School Volleyball Champions. FD beat the Harvest Eagles 25-17, 25-13, 25-18. The first set had it all jump serves for aces, monster kills, and a foot save to keep a rally going. FD finished the year undefeated. Champions on their way to a three-peat. Feels good, and uh, especially since COVID hit, we didn't get the chance to play that much, and uh, when we heard about the season uh, getting resumed, uh, it felt good and uh, we wanted to get a three-peat. 
we really dedicated a lot of time to going over every game, watching it with very uh, meticulous attention to detail. Uh, Harvest is a great team, but we came out here prepared. You know, we studied a lot, we worked a lot, and we really just, we came out with the best that we had. Daryl Robles scored three late points to give FD the lead 15 to seven in the second set. Matthew Santos showed his vert and got up at the net for a Friars point. The Friars closed out the set, outscoring the Eagles seven to three on their way to the 25-13 second set win. Heavy shots were put down by both teams to get the third set going. Friars looking fresh and ready to close out the match, leading 20 to 10. FD went on to take the set and win 25 to 18. It feels good, especially because we didn't have a junior season. So this year we're really hyped to have a season and we're able to pull through and win the ship. Our underclassmen are really doing good, so we have a lot of faith in them when, when we're gone, our seniors. So the, fu the future for them is looking bright and I'm proud of them. In soccer news, Korea Republic's Su Dong Wan has been appointed as head coach of the Matau Guam national team for the upcoming FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 and AFC Asian Cup China 2023 Asian Qualifiers Round 2. Following an announcement by the Guam Football Association Technical Department, Su, a longtime head coach of Korea University's championship football teams, who also recently served as part of the technical study group for the Korea Republic national team at the 2018 FIFA World Cup Russia, and currently for the K-League, accepted the role after the departure of Carl Dodd due to a family emergency earlier this month. Tino Sangil, GFA president, says we are very fortunate to have the full commitment of a very highly qualified coach to take on the head coach role with the Matau for round two of the Asian qualifiers on such a short notice. Sue, the 2016 Korea Football Association Coach of the Year, recently met with several players training for a call-up to represent Guam at the Asian qualifiers via Zoom. Well, that's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this. You may ask yourself, what is a blue raspberry? Or a pink lemon? Or even a strawberry watermelon? But they taste so good in these Minute Maid slushies from McDonald's. Who cares? It's more than a drink. It's a McDonald's drink. The closure of Dededo and Harmon Branch really is bittersweet. I get a little sentimental, and just because I come from an era where, you know, a brick and mortar is a symbol. COVID-19 has forced us, I think, to make a lot of changes to how we operate. But I think the upside to that is it's just a brief pause and we'll be back. Our guiding star has always been the vision of our founder, which is to be the driving force for prosperity in the communities that we serve. But we also know that we need to bring that forward in a way that is relevant for the age that we're living in. I feel that all these new things coming are a big indicator that we're here for you. We're here for our customers, our familia, and we're here to grow and learn every step of the way with you. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club. It's Wednesday, the 28th of April, so happy birthday to Anna Lisa Rosario. Happy birthday, Anna, from Dad and the family. Darius John Santos, happy hump day birthday to you, to Quinceanero Sunshine. Mucho Step Nephew, also please enjoy your day from your friends and family of Naki Tanaki Viva, 15, they say. Gabriela Tapazna, happy birthday to Ella. We hope you have a fantastic day on this Wednesday. And Lissandra Balahaja, happy birthday to Lin Lin. We hope you have the, let me get this right. We hope you have the funnest, bestest, relaxingest birthday ever. We love you from Anderson Air Force Base to Downton Naval Station, <laughs> from Riley and your NEX family. Great shout outs guys, great job by everybody. So we wanna remind you that Mother's Day is right around the corner. 
so you can celebrate with your friends at Cold Stone Creamery as they've got handcrafted premium ice cream cakes that are made fresh every single day 